Cocktail Gang, 250 shows and a few thousand cigarettes later, and tonight we start our second season. It's been one hell of a year. And you've been one heck of an audience, too. We thought it might be fun to take a look at some of the highlights and some of the lowlifes that have slithered through our metal detectors and onto our stage. From the Reverend Al Sharpton boxing debut to pablum puking lawyers, politicians, pimps, transsexuals. In some cases, incidentally, these are the same people. Anyway, join me as we take a look at a year one of the Morton Downey Jr. show and the Beast. Let's go! As the saying goes, let's start at the beginning, all right? October 19th, the day of the stock market crash and the day the Downey Show began. Here's our first guest and our first walk-offs. I'd much rather hear it from those people who have studied it than from someone who's laid down with everyone that they can find in a porn film. <laughs> much rather. We'll be back in you just a second. You probably believe friends, Ollie right? North. We're gonna come back in just a second. We're gonna go to some of our folks at the Loudmouth, and we'll give, we'll, we'll listen, we're not going to walk Ollie all over Seika. We're going to give her an... Yes, Ollie North was a hero, dear. Yeah, point he was a hero. Yeah. Wear your cap as well as he wears his. He was a hero. We'll be right back. <laughs> now let's take a look at some of my favorite openings. Look, I like cute little bunnies as much as anyone. Hell, my second wife was a Playboy bunny. You know, but some animal rights activists think that old Thumper here has the same rights as a human being. Come on. I mean, if performing medical experiments on this little guy saves one, one human life, all right, or results in the cure for cancer or AIDS, bring on the experiments, baby. And if you're the only thing standing between my family and, or some family in South Carolina and starvation, well, it's rabbit stew for you, baby. The nastiest mouth in the world takes on the strongest men in the world as we step into the ring for a no-holes-barred war with some of the biggest men in pro wrestling. You know, they said it couldn't be done in 1903 when the Wright brothers first flew. They said it couldn't be done in 1969 when man walked on the moon. And tonight, they say I can't do this entire show without smoking a cigarette, all right? We're gonna find out. We're gonna find out, but let me tell you something. If you don't like my butt, kiss my ass. How about now looking for a few moments at my favorite, all right? My favorite shows. Here's where I let the slime balls from the KKK and assorted weirdos know exactly where the hell I stand. Watch. All right, wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. I'll tell you what, folks. They're not gonna get away with on this program what they can get away with on Donahue and Oprah Winfrey. Does your group support the notion that whites are superior or one religion is superior to another? Absolutely not. Oh, you don't? No, we do not. Oh my God, you guys sound like you hired yourself a Madison Avenue PR firm. You learn how to do all this stuff. You don't consider that true, huh? Absolutely not. If that's the fact, all right, let me give you a quote from October 7th, the Ephrata newspaper, all right? Mm -hmm. This is you. Mm -hmm. I am a racist, I am a racist, and I'm damn proud of it. That's right. Well, what the hell are you telling me? You just told me that you're not a racist in here. I asked you that question, you know, you're a racist. 
I asked you if you're a racist. Are you, do you like your race? I love my race. You're a racist. I love the human race, you jerk. Yeah. You, you see that? You see that flag? You see that flag? Well, let me tell you something. We're proud of this flag. And if you don't like this flag, you can fix this flag. Yeah. You can fix this flag. No more red. No more the America flag. prostitute like yourself who's already hey listen out. fat mom let me tell you something to a prostitute like let me yourself. tell you something Friend. buddy don't uh, call me a prostitute you, you fat are. ugly swan <laughs> Next, we're going to look at the men of Downey as they step up to the plate. All right, Phil Donahue, Pat Buchanan, Jerry Falwell. Transportation for the Morton Downey Jr. Show furnished by Quality Limousine Service. When in New Jersey, call 201-785-9071. Now let's see what Phil Donahue had to say to Uncle Morty, all right? You're, you're going to know the other two guys, too. It has been stated many, many times that Phil Donahue would make a great public servant. Would you give thought to running for a political office someday? Well, I have given thought to it, and uh, I don't dismiss the possibility. I, I will say this, I have no interest in running around uh, the state or the city or any, any uh, precinct raising money. Um, I'm not, it's not that I'm too good for this, it is rather to say that I'm not sure after, uh, you know, at my age, that I want to go out and uh, beg people for the funds that it takes to uh, hold public office. If I did run, I think I'd like to be in the House. That looks to me like it's more fun than the Senate. While the ministries that deserve to survive will, and while in my own estimate, the vast majority of the, those who use the media, uh, like Billy Graham, like Charles Stanley and James Kennedy, the, the, most of the broadcasters in my estimate are very sincere, godly persons. 
we agree, Dr. Graham and I, that this probably is the worst broadside the cause of Christ has received in our lifetime. When Dwight Eisenhower left office, there were 600 Americans in Vietnam. When Kennedy was shot, there were 16,000. When I arrived in the White House January 20th, 1969, there were 535,000 Americans in Vietnam. Nixon started withdrawing them, 25,000 in April, 100,000 in November, but he wanted to withdraw them in a way that what those guys sacrificed and died for wasn't poured down a damn sewer. Well, it was. It was poured down by the Congress of the United States, which cut off the funding and cut off the bombing ability of the president when he had left them in charge we of all the Okay, now, we, we've got a reputation with the critics for being a tough show. Well, what's a tough show without a few really tough guys? Say hello to Larry Holmes. When I fought Ernie Shavers, the first fight, they, Don King told Richard Giacchetti, this is going on here say, that if Larry lose, don't worry, you got Ernie Shavers. But we no. got to get Larry to fight this fight for this amount of money. How many times in your career, Larry, were you told to shut up and not to talk to us, meaning the press, not to tell it like it is, which you generally do? How many times were you pressured by Suleiman and King and all these guys? I was told an awful lot to not say anything to the press. But you know what, Mike? A lot of times they were right. Because the press is just like everybody else. They're for you. Hey. I, I'm, not, I'm not getting on the press. I'm not getting on the press. I'm not you, Mike. I'm not getting on you. I'm getting on all of you. Anthony Imperiali. Tony, come on in. What happens if some unwelcome visitor comes to the Imperiali household? What do you got waiting for him? I shoot his ass all over my wall. Yeah! You see, what happens is that legislators forget that the law said that if there is a breakdown in law and order, that citizens have the right to bear arms to protect property, life, and limb. That's right. Any riot or any area that's a high criminal rate that the police cannot control. If a man comes in your home, you said it, shoot his ass dead, put a knife in his hand, and then call the police. This guy's crap. Let me tell you, I went to the top. In every league, AWA, NWA, WWF, I've been there. I made the money, and I was kicked out. But you don't hear me out here crying about it. I didn't need no benefits. Right. I had money. Right. I could buy what I wanted because I was good. I produced, and I did it. Hey, folks, and I ain't crying about it. You're the one crying if about anyone it. anyone out here. piece of <laughs> that's a piece of <laughs> You're a piece of <laughs> And I ain't going to hit you right, because you're going to sue me. That's all you are. All right, doctor. Sit down. You're a piece of garbage. Sit down. Good. Okay, now let's take a look at some of our more exotic guests, all right? Starting with Mel Fife, the only red-headed guy I know who wears a dress. <laughs> Mel, would you stand away from the lobby? <laughs> How do you respond to Ms. Uh, Lynn's comments, all right? First of all, I gotta explain the skirt, because there's a significance. I mean, I'm comfortable I, oh, in it, and I, and, you're all right, but I'm making a statement. Mm -hmm. I'm making a statement. It's a precious it's, one. It's, it's, <laughs> well, it's an important one. It's an important statement. It's not an accident that women can wear pants or suits and ties, men's clothes, but if a man takes a small step outside of a very narrow, limited male role, he's criticized for that, or he's ridiculed, or he's fired. A man who comes to work in a skirt might be fired by a female supervisor in a suit and tie. And if that happens to him, there are groups like the American Civil Liberties Union that pretend to care about equal rights. They won't take his case. They go to court to fight for women's rights, but men's equal rights just isn't a priority for them. See, this says men's equal rights is a priority for me, and that's why I'm wearing it. Good for you. <laughs> Wrangell. Now, FBI, Congressman Wrangell, in response in response to your op-ed piece in the New York Times, Go ahead, from my respond. cheap seat, I can see that the emperor wears no clothes. 
while you can't tell the government's interest from organized crimes? How come you and organized crime share the same buddy-buddy interest in keeping drugs illegal? Let me and tell you something about the New York Times. The New York Times, the New York Times for Rangel one year, the, war the New York drugs? Times did You're not even know. You're probably one of their best friends in I'm Washington. You, in fact, I you know, are I made acting as a this. lobbyist for the black market. I feel that the spring of Paraquat on marijuana is chemical warfare upon a human body, and I feel that Edwin Mises' Nazi-type tactics upon men, women, children, animals, and vegetation have got to be stopped, and that people like the Reagan administration have got to be placed on trial for mass genocide. Because dig it, sir, dig it. You think you can stop marijuana? You've got one thing coming, buddy. You, you cut it down one place and you cut another. We have thousands of people marching up every first Saturday in May at Fifth Avenue. You're a perfect example of what the stuff water. does to the brain. So Here's a sleazeball fascist we ripped to guts, all right? The strangest guy in America, Lyndon LaRouche. I'm in the middle of this. You ought to know that, Maude. I'm in the middle of research, have been for a number of years on this. Are you a research expert? Wait, I'm, look, Are you a research wait, expert? shut up and let Are me you, answer you the question. shut up. Are you a research expert? Are you as much a research expert as you are an economist? Where's your economic degree from? Why, why don't you shut up and Where's your economic the degree from? Why don't you shut up? Why don't you shut up? All you're doing is spewing garbage. Your people who support you, Lyndon LaRouche, are the same type of people who snuck into Nazi Germany, didn't let the people know what was going on, and ruined that country. And you're the same This. Okay, you've met the men of Downey. Next, you're going to meet the women who do their thing. First, I want you to meet my two favorite Glorias. We had Toot, remember the Toot, 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 Toot lady? And All Red. Go get them, gals. Oh, because I offended you black people, you folks. You know, I resent being called you folks. Because I offended you folks, I'm gonna give you some housing, and I got some goodies in store for you, and this will make you happy. 
You're going to tell me that all of a sudden this man can wave a magic wand and come up with some programs that benefit black people overnight because he offended it us. It was an ugly... Hey, as you lie, was... listen, you're going to blame the mother who has been t doing more than her share of taking the responsibility physically, emotionally, financially. What about that father who's been abandoning the children? What about that father who's been... To the, oh, wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. To the father who's been abandoning the children, he is scum. He is scum. Any father who won't take care of his child is scum. But let me tell you, it's also just as tough for the father to be peddling out his 250 bucks a month per child or whatever it is, all right, and have the mother say, I'm sorry you can't come to visit this week because my boyfriend's here. So the poor father doesn't get to visit the kid. She uses the kid as a weapon because she can't use her body anymore as a weapon. Okay, now I don't want you to think it's all women's lib issues here, all right? Take a look at a veritable smorgasbord of the female pulchritude. She's not inhibited, she okay. said, and you don't I feel, feel sad. I right? feel like I knew you I'm weren't probably inhibited. a hell of a lot happier than you. Are you I happy? feel good about myself, I feel good about my body, I feel good about sex, and I feel good about who I am. Let me His hands were tied behind him, all right? Jennifer was sitting on top of him, facing him. He pulled one hand loose, grabbed her, all right? His other hand was to... Let me go to the audience. Excuse me, ma'am. Can I borrow a pair of your panties? <laughs> Lisa. Let me ask you, and here's a handheld microphone. Mel, let me give you this, all right? So you can hand it to Lisa. Would you tie my hands uh, Let me take this jacket off so I don't have the jacket off. Would you tie my hands like Jennifer had tied, allegedly tied, Mr. Levin's hand, uh, Mr. Uh, Chambers' hands? Now, his hands were tied, all right, tied and bound. Now, he claimed he was down on the ground, right, like this with his hands, all right, right. She's tied over behind. On top of him. She is over on top of him. Right. 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 Neil, Neil. She's up. Right. She claimed she. He claimed that she had her back to him. All right. Back to him. All right. I'm like this. All right. Okay. And I have to. And I grab and pulled you over like this. Right. First of all, why was his other hand locked behind him? At any time when I had removed the panties from my hand, both hands were free. Right. All right. So that doesn't hold water, does it? No, that doesn't also, hold the water. Other, the other thing, too, more, as all the girls here know, you wash these panties. I mean, they don't last for anything. Even a 90-pound weakling could pop out of them. Pageant winner, am I correct? Um, of a different sort, yes. All right. What was what was the title you won? I won biggest breast in the world. <laughs> All right. Okay, wait a second. Wait a second. Now to steal a line from Lloyd Price's old song, you got a great set of personalities. All right. Roll that tape, guys, and look at these personalities. Let us talk here for a second. Shut up. I've right. turned on MTV. I've turned on. Wait a second. I've turned on MTV a number of times, and I really only see two kinds of women on MTV. Young blods, blondes, and virginal boots, all right? Let's see your boots, boy. Huh? Oh, I'm, right. not, I'm not a young blonde, baby. And, oh, I'm, yeah, babe. and I'm not a virgin, but neither oh. are you, either one. Yeah, but you know what you are. And junior, usually they or have. Or junior, I hate to tell you, you're chain smoking in my face, and you're gonna get cancer. And please, don't get. Me I'll tell you something, Mort. You, you know, Mort. You know, Mort. This shows your. It's totally. Shut up. 
Shut up. This total, total shows your total insecurity of oh, females God. and everything because you have to be sucking on a cigarette. I, it's amazing to me. I, I, if you don't have your own to suck on. I supply decent housing as well as the rest of my colleagues. And I am in business because housing is a business. I'm not here to suck for anybody. All right, are you making a profit? I'm making a living and I'm proud of it. All right. And the city took one of my properties away and I was in the restaurant business. You, you, or you, Miriam, over there, you to give me my house. I worked seven days a week. Let's face it, gang, all right? A woman's place these days is in the house. I mean, maybe even the Senate, all right? But now the radical feminists want to put our women in uniform on the front line. Well, baby, I don't want the only thing standing between me and a Russian tank to be a 36B cup and designer, com <laughs> designer combat boots. I don't think anyone would deny that women uh, have the right to serve in the armed forces, but should they be placed on the front lines to fight physically against men? Well, they're not. They're not? No. I know they're not now. I'm asking you, should they be? I don't know that you can ever, that you'll be able to define a front line. And I think that that is uh, basically it. You don't it. know that you can ever define the front line? Not anymore. Ah. You Your think weapon... they have a difficult time defining the front line in Israel? Pardon me? You think they had a tough time defining the front line in Israel when they went into Lebanon? The, the... Think they have a tough time defining the front line when you're a rebel in Afghanistan? If you're talking about our women in the infantry, women in the United States military, not in the infantry. The no, I the know battle that. Doctrine, That's not the question I asked you, Caroline. I understand that, okay. but I, I'm telling you what, what the issue is, all right? No, no. You cannot no, no, define... No, no, I'm I telling know, you You're trying to do that. I understand that. I understand that. Let's see. Let's see if we can start this all over again. Assuming that there will be conventional wars that perhaps we are intelligent enough not to get involved in a nuclear war, and there are definable front lines again. Do you think women should fight in those front lines? The whole current strategy Can and I doctrine... Can I get a yes or no out of you? You sound no. like you're a government you worker. You may not get a yes or no out of me because it's not a correct question. The question, the, the strategy... Should men fight in the front lines? Can I ask you that? There. Are you asking if there will be a, a... If there is a conventional war, should men fight in the front lines? Well, men are there. I, I think uh, that you're not there. There's not a front line right now. If there is a front line, should men be there? God, you are dense. Okay. No. Do you remember telling Bill Boggs you'd like to have sex with John Wayne Gacy? Uh-uh. Mm -hmm. I don't remember saying that. Why has your story changed from February to May? 